you were with Honeywell for what turned out to be another really good event uh, for their HCE, which is their, you know, their software platform for uh, the connected edge. Yeah, I mean, I was all in on this event, uh, Daniel. I I had a uh, uh, a conversation with uh, Kevin Dehoff, uh, Honeywell president and and CEO, on what he what he wanted to accomplish uh, with the event. And I wrote a Forbes article on it, and you can see that in in the in the show notes. But um, it, it was good. It, there were new products. There were basically three new uh, products that came out. Uh, they expanded their uh, OT cybersecurity. They brought out Honeywell Honeywell Forge Performance Plus for industrial customers, and I view that as a as an EPM play and a sustainability uh, service. Uh, and then finally, really leaning into the future SaaS capability that they want to bring to the table. And you know, you step back and you ask yourself, let's go back ten years. Uh, we did one of the first white papers on segmenting the internet of things. And we had the industrial and in, in, internet of things. Then we had the human internet of things. And of course, we did a four quadrant analysis of different workloads and use cases and talked about what it took to win. And I think 10 years ago, the belief was that the born in the cloud companies were going to win in this whole industrial internet segment. I mean, you know, you have AWS and in, in green grass, you had uh, Google Cloud IoT platform, but the reality is, is these these big turn, huge turn uh, types of um, huge turn types of projects. They're strategic. They take a lot of time, and they need, need to connect with brownfield. I mean, uh, think of manufacturing plants. Think of uh, airplanes. Think of um, uh, nuclear power plants, retail warehouses, life sciences commercial real estate, none of that is pretty unless it's brand new. Uh, and with about 10% brand new and 90% needing to be retrofitted, Honeywell absolutely has a chance here, Daniel, uh, a big chance. They speak OT. They are OT uh, to so many different industries, commercial real estate, retail, industrials, life science, airplanes. Um, and then they brought in a bunch of folks from uh, Oracle, SAP to build out a platform. And uh, we're in year three or four now. And I think these folks absolutely get it. Uh, they also understand the reality of the shifting demographics. You know, one of the things that they went uh, hard at is, is they showed uh, the past and the future. In the past, they they had a, you know, middle-aged guy, white guy with a with a hard hat on saying, you know, 30 year expert gut feel, right? With a clipboard. And then uh, on the other side, they had a, a probably a Gen Z uh, African-American woman saying data is real, the, the digital native, right? And they can't get people to come and work these jobs, right? So the whole, the whole thought here is if you um, uh, have a ton of sensors, collect all that data, you can literally do a lot of this control from your smartphone or a tablet. It was all about attracting the digital superheroes, right? Clean data, automated operations, AI and ML for decision support, and, and world-class tools. So I am very optimistic. Uh, they had a lot of great people either on stage too. They had Infosys. They had... Jen Felch, she was a, a guest of the uh, of the six five uh, on. Uh, they had OT cybersecurity experts. They had real people. Daniel, one guy got on with a jeans and uh, gym shoes and a t-shirt, and I think there may have been a mustard stain on it. But uh, you know, this guy basically worked OT security uh, in uh, in in a factory. So. Um, I'm really interested to see what happens in the future. I'd like to see more partners engaged. And the one commitment that uh, CEO Kevin Dehoff made and also David Trice is they're going to go to six month updates. I'd like quarterly updates. I like a lot of SaaS products we know, but you have to start somewhere. Six month updates uh, driven by 1800 software uh, engineers. 3,600 employees and 150 data scientists. 
was an impressive show. That is impressive, Pat. And and by the way, you know, this is not a new like wow moment for you and I. We've been following this. We've been working with Honeywell through its evolution of Forge. We've had there not only the CEO of HCE, but the CEO of Honeywell, Darius Adonchek, on our uh, 65 Summit multiple times. We've kind of had this like, hey, world, this is not just a industrial company. This is a technology company, whether it's building technologies to provide and enable real meaningful ESG, like clean yeah. fuel, or yeah. technologies to actually monitor the fact that the edge, you know, we talk so much about the edge and how big it is. All that data coming off the edge isn't really managed by traditional IT. It's not. Exactly. You know, some of that data does make it back to the data center, but most of it lives outside the data center. That could be manufacturing, that could be an office building, that could be a multi-dwelling unit in a, in a community, that could be a government, uh, you know, rail system. I mean, all those things have data, and Honeywell is one of those companies that's well positioned to capitalize on that opportunity. That's what happened here. That's what you're hearing about. That's the evolution. And watch for companies like Dell, like HPE, like uh, Cisco, the ones we've been talking about on this show, are going to be doubling down on partnerships with companies like Honeywell to find a way to bridge the gap. And again, not new, just something that really hasn't fully been realized this early on um, because despite the fact that we act like IOT and ITOT convergence has really happened in a meaningful way, it's still early innings. It looks a little bit like the cloud. You know, we talk about things like they're done, but in so many ways, it's just starting. 